Japanese government officials are asking fishermen to support a plan to divert water around the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant and into the sea. They say it would slash the amount of water building up inside the reactor buildings. Senior Vice Economy and Industry Minister Kazuyoshi Akaba explained the plan to the head of the National Federation of Fisheries Cooperatives. Akaba told Hiroshi Kishi that authorities would monitor the water entering the sea. He said they would make sure it was well below the government's safety standard. Around 400 tons of groundwater is flowing in from nearby mountains every day. It comes into contact with water used to cool nuclear fuel and becomes contaminated. Officials say their plan could reduce the inflow by 25 percent. Kishi said he understands the plan, but he said it's too early to give his consent. I want to make a final decision after studying how the process will be monitored and what the government will do to prevent unfounded speculation hurting the reputation of the fishing industry. Kishi said the local fishing organizations need to give their support before he can approve the plan. First, they said they wouldn't release contaminated water into the ocean. Then they said it was safe to release radioactive water within set limits. But the very act of contaminating the ocean damages our reputation. Before the disaster, we would get up early every morning. We'd work really hard and finally managed to scratch out a living. Even if they fix the plant, our reputation still damaged. We can only sell our fish at 70 or 80 percent of pre-earthquake prices. Very few people can make a living that way. Unable to fish, many of the fishermen now work part-time as manual laborers. One of them is Toshio Suzuki, who miraculously survived even after his boat was temporarily knocked over by the tsunami. Every day he goes out to clear rocks and tile fragments from fields. During 2013, he went out on his boat only three times. He went to catch fish samples for radiation tests. I saved my boat, but I can't fish as things stand. And now there's no more clearing work to do either. It's hard to make a living. I help out on shore and find odd jobs to do now and then. But people still won't buy our fish. It may be safe, but if they don't buy, we can't sell. How does the future look to you? Oh, if I could, I'd go back to fishing tomorrow. But it's very hard to make any progress. That's the truth. In the middle of November 2013, a large trawler returned to the fishing harbor on Matsukawa Ura Bay. It's an experiment in marketing fish that have been inspected and certified as safe by inspectors in Soma. Today they've caught flathead flounder, 
Flounder live on the sea floor and feed on contaminated material that has fallen to the bottom. For this reason, people generally believe that flounder might be contaminated too. After several months of testing, however, no flounder have been found to exceed the radiation safety level. When did you resume fishing? November. We haven't lifted the ban, but we've lifted restrictions on shipping. Are you glad to be catching bottom fish? Yes, especially flounder. After careful testing, fishermen are able to catch more and more kinds of fish. But the volume of the catch is still only about 2% what it was at its peak. Even so, the fish market has regained some of its former vitality. These diners love seafood and many are looking for new taste experiences. So fish farmers in western Japan are giving them a little twist with their fish. They're now hoping their idea catches on abroad. Food buyers at a trade show in Singapore check out the produce from Ehime Prefecture in western Japan. The sellers may have a hit on their hands. They're offering samples of specially produced yellowtail and sea bream. Potential buyers are keen to try the fish amid a pan-Asian boom in healthy and delicate Japanese food. The fish themselves look nothing out of the ordinary, but their flavor is quite unusual. I can really taste the citrus. It's a bit sour but yet sweet. That's very fantastic. The new breed is called Mikan fish. It has been raised on feed containing the peel and juice of citrus fruits, including mandarin oranges known as mikan. The refreshing tang gives the fish an appealing twist. Singaporeans will love this fish once they taste it. Please try it. The mikan fish was invented from a handy coincidence. Ehime farmers grow more citrus fruit than any other prefecture in Japan. Their production of farmed fish also tops the country. Much of the citrus is made into juice. That leaves a lot of leftover peel. Researchers at a fisheries center tried adding the peel to the fish's feed. They found it gave a pleasant flavor and aroma. The fish stayed fresh longer too and had a less fishy smell. Kenshin Kiwada runs a fish processing company in Ehime. The new fish caught his eye. He says he was amazed the first time he tried it. The fish's texture and aroma were new to me. It wasn't smelly like other fish. That was enough to convince me fish raised on the feed would sell. Kiwada started selling the fish two years ago. He works with the farmers to determine the best methods. They now give the special feed to Yellowtail from two months before shipping. The fish cost about 10% more than normal breeds. But demand has been high. Kiwada estimates sales for this fiscal year will be double last year, or nearly $5 million. We've come up with something you could never do with natural fish. I hope people all around the world enjoy it. The mikan fish join other fruit-fed seafood to catch the eye of Japanese consumers over the past couple of years. The fish are available in sushi restaurants and supermarkets. More than 10 kinds of fruit fish are now available including lemon yellowtail and kabosu citrus flatfish. 
An industry expert says the new breeds could give a boost to Japan's fish farmers, who are struggling in an overcrowded domestic market. Japanese producers are sophisticated when it comes to identifying consumers' needs and tastes. They're good at developing and supplying the products that best fit. The fruit fish is a great example of this. The new style fish farmers still face such challenges as their relatively high prices and convincing shoppers of the value of their product. If such obstacles can be overcome, the future looks zesty. The Japanese embassy in London has held a tasting to promote Koshu wine from Japan's central prefecture of Yamanashi. And the, two you have in front of the organizers of the event invited 15 wine journalists and sommeliers widely recognized in Britain to the Japanese ambassador's official residence. A traditional multi-course meal was served with nine varieties of Koshu wine. The organizers asked the participants to pair the wine with traditional Japanese food and help make the great combination known to the world. Fresh, light, crisp, uh, slightly aromatic but not too much, so a lot of quality. So I've been a good supporter of Koshu, but today for the first time I felt the wines we tasted today anyway were all very successful wines on the world stage. Yamanashi Governor Shomei Yokochi said he is sure that Koshu will be recognized in Europe and America and win the hearts Researchers of Researchers warn that climate change poses a threat to Japan's shoreline. They predict that up to 90 percent of the country's beaches could disappear by the end of this century if sea levels continue to rise. A research group from Tohoku University conducted a simulation on how Japanese coastal areas will be affected by rising sea levels. Scientists at the UN Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change estimate that sea levels around the world could rise up to 82 centimeters on average by the late 21st century if greenhouse gas emissions continue at the current pace. The Japanese team found that if that happens, 91 percent or about 250 square kilometers of beaches in Japan could be submerged. The UN panel experts estimate that anti-global warming measures could hold the rise at 26 centimeters. But the Japanese scientists say even in that case, 47 percent of beaches in the country could disappear. The chief researcher Keiko Udo says the loss of beaches would mean the destruction of habitats for coastal marine life which could disrupt ecosystems. People need to work to cut greenhouse gas emissions and also take measures to deal with the effects of global warming, such as raising the height of dikes. Residents of a northeastern Japanese city flooded by the 2011 tsunami held a race to practice the lessons learned from the disaster. Participants ran uphill to Senjuin Temple in Kawaishi City, Iwate Prefecture. The temple is a designated evacuation site. Forty runners dashed from the town center to the temple in an emergency evacuation exercise. The course is 286 meters. The three fastest runners were honored with the titles Lucky Men and Women. I hope this will be a lucky year for me and everybody else. I don't want a tragedy like that to happen again. We will continue to hold this race every year for as long as possible. The downtown area of the city was flooded and heavily damaged in the March 2011 tsunami.